Hi guys, this is Jamil and this is another tutorial about biochemistry. As you know that we were discussing about the transcription and translation and in this lecture we will discuss about the processing of eukaryotic pre-messenger RNA. So first uh, let me to repeat some points that suppose that this is a DNA double stranded molecule. So this is a DNA double stranded molecule 5 prime to 3 prime coding strand and and the strand 3 prime to 5 prime this is the template strand so template strand and coding strand so this is the rna polymerase enzyme 2 in case of uh, transcription rna polymerase enzyme 2 which is acting on the dna double strand molecule and it is forming the rna so let's suppose that this is the rna messenger rna so, if we talk about in case of prokaryotes, then in case of prokaryotes, uh, RNA polymerase enzyme 2 acts on the DNA double strand molecule and it forms the messenger RNA that is a complete mature messenger RNA. But if we talk about in case of eukaryotic transcription, in case of eukaryotic transcription, RNA polymerase enzyme 2 will act on the DNA double strand molecule and it will form the messenger RNA that is not a mature messenger RNA. So, this one is not a mature messenger RNA. This is not a mature messenger RNA. We can say that this is the primary transcript or we can say that this is the immature messenger RNA, this is the pre-messenger RNA, pre-messenger RNA immature messenger RNA or we can say that this is the primary transcript. So, let me repeat once again that let us suppose that this is the DNA double strand molecule uh, one is the coding strand from 5 prime to 3 prime and another is the template strand from 3 prime to 5 prime and in case of prokaryotes RNA polymerase enzyme not RNA polymerase 2 because you know you know that in case of prokaryotes only one type of RNA polymerase forms the all types of RNA. So, RNA polymerase acts on the template strand and it reads the template strand from 3 prime to 5 prime and it forms the messenger RNA from 5 prime to 3 uh, 5, 5 prime to 3 prime. So, in case of prokaryotes and the messenger RNA formed in case of prokaryotes will be the mature messenger RNA. But in case of eukaryotes, if we talk about in case of eukaryotes, you know that this is a DNA double strand molecule, RNA polymerase 2 enzymes form the messenger RNA, okay. So, RNA polymerase 2 will act on the template strand, it will read the template strand from 3 prime to 5 prime and it will form the messenger RNA. The messenger RNA found in case of eukaryotes is not a mature messenger RNA. This is the pre-messenger RNA, this is the immature messenger RNA or we can say that this is the primary transcript. Okay. So, this primary transcript, this pre-messenger RNA, this is this immature messenger RNA has undergoes some processing. We are going to discuss about that processing that is the processing of eukaryotic pre-messenger RNA. We can say that processing of eukaryotic primary transcript. Okay. So, move on. Here we can see, here we can see that the primary transcript undergoes co and post transcriptional processing inside the nucleus. As you know that this all mechanism, this transcription happens inside the nucleus in case of eukaryotes. Okay. So, the, in case of eukaryotes, this messenger RNA will be formed the, which, which is a primary transcript or we can say that it is the pre-messenger RNA. This pre-messenger RNA undergoes some co and post transcriptional processing. These processing are three steps uh, basically of three types that is capping, splicing and polyadenylation. First let me to explain this point. This point that these processing happens inside the nucleus to form the mature messenger RNA from pre-messenger RNA. But here is world use that is the co and post transcriptional processing. What does it mean co and post transcriptional processing? Co mean before, this co mean before and as we have explained in the previous lectures as well, post mean after. So, these processing are of three steps, are of three types, capping, splicing and polyadenylation. Some of them are the co-transcriptional processing and some of them are the post-transcriptional processing. I mean that some of them occurs before transcription is completed and some of them happens after transcription is completed okay some of them happens after transcription and some of them happens before transcription so basically when this pre messenger rna so let's suppose that this is the pre messenger rna this is the 
प्रीम सेंजर आर एन ए दिस प्रीम सेंजर आर एन ए विल अंडर गो दिस को एंड पोस्ट ट्रांसक्रिप्शनल प्रोसेसिंग इन साइड द न्यूक्लियस दिस इज द न्यूक्लियस इन साइड द न्यूक्लियस अंडर गो सम प्रोसेसिंग एंड टू एंड इट फॉर्म्स द मेच्योर मिसेंजर आर एन ए दैन इट विल फॉर्म द मेच्योर मिसेंजर आर एन ए ओके नो मेच्योर मिसेंजर आर एन ए विल बी फॉर्म एंड देन दिस मेच्योर मिसेंजर आर एन ए विल मूव आउट साइड इन द सेट ऑफ प्लाज फॉर ट्रांसलेशन टू फॉर्म द प्रोटीन्स ओके सो नो द क्वेश्चन अराइज इज हेयर दैट द क्वेश्चन इज दस दैट वाई मिसेंजर आर एन ए दैट इज प्रोड्यूस्ड इन द यूक्रियाट इज प्री मिसेंजर आर एन ए ओके हेयर इज द क्वेश्चन वाई दिस इज द प्री मिसेंजर आर एन ए बिकॉज इन केस ऑफ यूक्रियाटिक ट्रांसक्रिप्शन इन डबल सैनड डी एन ए डबल सैनड डी एन ए द टेम्पलेट स्टैट हैज टू काइंड ऑफ रीजन फर्स्ट वन इज द इंट्रॉन्स एंड सेकेंड इज द एक्जोन्स इंट्रॉन्स एक्जोन्स सेम लाइक दैट दिस सिक्वेंस ऑफ इंट्रॉन्स एक्जोन्स इंट्रॉन्स एंड एक्जोन्स एंड यू नो दैट इंट्रॉन्स इंट्रॉन्स मीन दैट इंटरवेनिंग रीजन एज आई हैव एक्सप्लेन इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर सो इंट्रॉन्स आर द इंटरवेनिंग रीजन इंटरवेनिंग रीजन mean that non coding regions we can say that these are non coding regions and exons are the expressed regions or we can say that these are the coding region so because this dna strain has both introns and exons so rna polymerase 2 will transcribe the both introns and exons so this messenger rna that is a pre messenger rna will contain both introns and exons okay introns exons introns exons introns and exons so you can see that in this case exons are expressed regions these are the coding regions while introns are the non coding regions it's mean that these exons have information for the formation of proteins rather introns has no such kind of information so we have to remove these introns okay we have to remove these introns therefore this messenger rna is a pre messenger rna because you you can you can see that information is fragmented so this it contains information and these in, uh, this these in, uh, these informations are uh, interrupted by the introns we have to remove the introns therefore this is the pre messenger rna we have to change it into mature messenger rna this is the one concept and if we talk about the second concept the second concept says that as you know that in case of eukaryotes there is a nucleus so this messenger rna will form inside the nucleus after that it will move outside into the cytoplasm where it will form the proteins with the help of translation by binding with the ribosomes but you you know that it has to travel along so for the security problems for its safe travel outside from nucleus to cytoplasm it needs some kind of security so for the security uh, for this security uh, for the security problems it undergoes some processing as well so these processing are of three steps mechanism we're talking about the mechanism then it is of three steps the first one is the capping splicing and polyadenylation these capping and polyadenylation are for the purpose of security problems and if we talk about the splicing that the splicing is just for remover of introns that are interrupted between the exons so we have to remove the introns with the help of splicing and for the purpose of security problems we are going to take these two steps capping and polyadenylation and as you know that in the previous lecture we discussed about the capping okay in the capping we add 7 methyl guanidyl cap at 5 prime end of the pre messenger rna okay now in this lecture and next one is the splicing splicing we discussed in the next lecture and in this lecture we will discuss about the polyadenylation so what does mean polyadenylation polyadenylation is nothing else this is the addition of polyase so in the in polyadenylation we will add the poly a tail to 3 prime end of pre messenger rna let's say this is the pre messenger rna so we will add the let's suppose that this is the Five prime end and this is the three prime end. Okay, so at five prime end here is a seven methyl guanyl cap and at three prime end here we will add the polyacetyl. So let's suppose that this is a polyacetyl. So what is the polyadenylation? Polyadenylation is that polyacetyl will be added at the three prime end of the pre messenger RNA. So what is the polyacetyl? First, you must know that what is the polyacetyl. Polyacetyl is nothing else. It is the you can say collection of hundred or two hundred, hundred or two hundred A's adenines. 
so this poly a tail is the 100 or 200 nucleotides of adenine so 100 200 adenines when will be added at the 3 prime end 3 prime end of the pre messenger rna then it will be called the poly adenylation of the pre messenger rna so okay so i think definition is clear for you that what is the definition of polyadenylation now we will discuss about the mechanism that basically what mechanism happens in case of polyadenylation an endonuclease cuts the molecule at 3 prime of sequence aa u triple a poly a addition signal then poly a polymerase adds the poly a tail 100 to 200 a's at 3 prime end then it will call the polyadenylation this is the overview of the mechanism but now we are going to discuss this mechanism in detail please focus on so for this purpose we need some kind of proteins we need some kind of factors some protein factors so uh, uh, we need some kind of protein factors i am going to write these protein factors what are these protein factors first we must know about that proteins factors that we need in the mechanism of the polyadenylation the first one is the uh, first one is the cleavage and cleavage and polyadenylation uh, specificity factor cleavage and polyadenylation specificity factor the second one is the cleavage stimulating factor the third one is the cleavage factor the fourth one is the polyadenylation polyadenylation binding proteins and the fourth one is the uh, last one is the poly a polymerase enzyme poly a polymerase enzyme so this one is the uh, cleavage and polyadenylation specificity factor okay this is the cleavage and polyadenylation specificity factor something like that cpcf so cleavage and okay cleavage and polyadenylation specificity factor cleavage stimulating factor cleavage factor polyadenylation binding proteins poly a polymerase enzyme we need some of these kind of protein factors for the purpose of this eukaryotic uh, processing that is the polyadenylation so basically what happens as you know that let's suppose that this is the dna double stranded molecule one is the coding strand and that is the template strand and if we talk about that here is the rna polymerase enzyme 2 so this is the rna polymerase enzyme 2 okay so this is acting on the template strand and it is forming the pre messenger rna let's suppose this is the pre messenger rna this is the 5 prime this is the 3 prime and as you know that at 5 prime end we have the 7 methyl cap so let's suppose that this is the cap so what's happening so now if we talk about the uh, uh, processing of uh, uh, eukaryotic pre messenger rna polyadenylation then this polyadenylation is the post transcriptional okay so this one is the post transcriptional but remember once point that it, this one starts just during the transcription and completes after transcription but we say that this is the post transcription okay so you can see that it is starting now I, I am going to explain it it will start during the transcription but it will complete after the transcription but we will say that this is the post transcription but really what happens please come back to our concept this is the DNA double strand molecule this is the forming uh, pre messenger RNA 5 prime and 3 prime and 5 prime and has cap and this is the RNA polymerase 2 so basically what happens so when this RNA polymerase 2 reach at the end of the gene which is going to transcribe so let's suppose that here is a gene so let's suppose that uh, here is a gene so when this rna polymerase 2 reach at the end of the gene which is going to transcribe then this forming pre messenger rna encounters some kind of sequence that sequence is let's suppose that here a a u a a a so this pre messenger RNA will, will encounter some kind of sequence. This sequence is A A U A A A, and this sequence is called the poly A addition signal. Okay, so this sequence will call the poly A addition signal. When this pre messenger RNA will give the poly A addition signal, then this poly A addition signal will recruit will recruit the cleavage polyadenylation and specificity factor. So now this cleavage polyadenylation specific factor will recruit on the pre messenger rna so now this will come 
So let's suppose that this it will come here. Cleavage, polyadenylation, and specificity, specificity factor. Okay, specificity factor will come here. So after that, after this polyadenylation signal, then pre messenger RNA will encounter n kind of n kind of sequence. That sequence is C A sequence. So now it will encounter C A sequence. When it will encounter the C A sequence, then this C A sequence will recruit will recruit the another kind of protein factor that is the cleavage stimulating factor. So now cleavage stimulating factor will come here. So this is the cleavage stimulating factor. So now cleavage stimulator factor will also recruit on the pre messenger RNA. So I think this is understandable for you. We are going to uh, we are moving on and the next step. This recognition of <coughs> this recognition of cleavage polyadenylation state specificity factor and cleavage stimulating factor of recognition of CA and AA mean that this whole recognition helps the recruit of another cleavage another protein factor that is the cleavage factor. So now cleavage factor will come on. So now cleavage factor will come and it it will land just after the CA so just after the sequence of CA. So it will land here. So this is the cleavage factor. So it will land just after the CA sequence. So now cleavage factor will come. So now what is the cleavage factor? Cleavage factor is nothing else. It is an endonuclease. It is an enzyme. It is an endonuclease. So it will cut the messenger RNA. So it will cut the messenger RNA right out here because transcription is complete. RNA polymerase 2 enzyme has reached at the end of the gene. Okay, at the end of the gene which is going to be transcribed mean that transcription is completed when transcription is completed then this cleavage factor which has been recruited on the uh, pre messenger RNA just after the CNA. So it is nothing else it is an endonuclease enzyme it will cut the pre messenger RNA just after the CA sequence. So now in this way we will get the pre messenger RNA in this way. So it has this is polyadenylation signal okay polyadenylation signal this is the CA signal okay and this is the 5 prime end this is the 3 prime end and this 5 prime end has already 5 prime capping and now here, uh, here, 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 here is added the you can see the cleavage polyadenyl specific factor and here is added the cleavage stimulating factor and now cleavage factor has been released because it has done its job it has uh, cut the RNA polymerase so it has been released. So after that, after this cutting, then after that, the polyadenylation binding proteins will recruit. So now these polyadenylation binding proteins will recruit on this, on this pre messenger RNA. So these will recruit as well. We can see that here is a polyadenylation binding proteins recruited as well on the pre messenger RNA. So after this, what happens? After this poly A polymerase enzyme, which is already present here. Don't bother about the polymerase enzyme. It is already already present on the uh, on the DNA double strand molecule. So here is the question that where are uh, these cleavage polyadenylation stimulating factor, specificity factor, and cleavage stimulating factor, and cleavage factor, and polyadenylation binding proteins are present are located. These are are located on the tail of RNA polymerase enzyme two. So these all are located on the RNA polymerase two, and then after that. After these signals, these will be recruited on the messenger RNA. Okay, so now if you talk about the poly A polymerase enzyme, as you know that poly A polymerase enzyme is already present here. So this uh, uh, poly A polymerase enzyme will come, and this poly A polymerase enzyme will use the ATP. So in this case, we can see that the, it will use the ATP. So now it has come. This poly A polymerase enzyme has come right out here, and it will use the ATP, and it will form the it will add the adenine uh, uh, adenine nucleotide something like that is it will put out the A's right out here and it will release the inorganic phosphate out okay so it will use the atp nucleotide and it will add the A's how many A's 200 to 300 A's so it will add the 200 100 to 200 A's right after the cs sequence so this is the polyadenylation signal and it will release out the inorganic phosphate so now this polyadenylation has been added you can see that poly a tail is added at the 3 prime end this is the pre prime 3 prime end so this poly a poly a tail is added at the 3 prime end the pre messenger rna then after that after this addition these factors will be released out so these factors will be released out these factors will be released out and now 
polyadenylation binding proteins as the name indicate that these are the polyadenylation binding proteins so these proteins will come and these proteins will bind will, will bind with these a's so these will bind with a's so in this case polyadenylation will happen so what is the mechanism i think now it is understandable for you that an endonucleus cuts the molecule which is the endonucleus cleavage factor first what happens i'm going to repeat that uh, messenger rna uh, uh, encounters the polyadenylation signal. This polyadenylation signal recruits the cleavage, uh, cleavage and polyadenylation specific factor. Then after that, CS sequence will be encountered on the pre messenger RNA. This this sequence will recruit the cleavage stimulating factor. This recognition will recruit the cleavage factor, or we can say that endonucleus enzyme. So this endonucleus enzyme will come and it will cut the molecule at the three prime end just after the CS sequence. Okay, just after the CS sequence with the help of polyadenylation signal because first what happens uh, first uh, what appears polyadenylation signal so it will cut after the cutting then poly a polymerase enzyme the poly a polymerase enzyme will come and it will add the poly a tail 100 to 200 a's at 3 prime end by using the atp and it will use the a it will add the a's right out here and it will release outside the inorganic phosphate then after that polyadenylation binding proteins will come and it will add the adenine as polyadenylation binding proteins so these will come and this will bind with these a's so in this way this polyadenylation will happen so i think this is understandable for you so now we will move on next is the significance that what is the so before significance there is some point that is the exception what is the exception that few messenger rna like histone messenger rna has no poly a tail Few messenger RNA in eukaryotes like histone messenger RNA, they have no any kind of poly A tail. In, the, in histone messenger RNA, poly A relation tail will not happen. This mechanism will not happen. This is an exception. MCQs may come. So, uh, something like that, that histone messenger RNA has no poly A tail. So, remember that point. So, now we will talk about the significance that what is the significance of poly adenylation. Here is the two points. The first one is the Please remember, uh, I, I explained just earlier in the lecture that uh, what is the significance, uh, why, why we need this processing for the security problem and second one for the removal of introns. Introns happen just in the purpose of splicing but here we are uh, dealing with the security problem. For the security problem there is a polyadenylation and capping but what is the role of polyadenylation in security problem that is the significance of polyadenylation okay so first one is the poly a tail protects against rapid degradation so first i'm going to form it again so let's suppose that this is the five prime and this is the three prime this is the uh, uh, i'm going to uh, this is the messenger rna okay so this is the capping okay so this is the tail that is of a's okay so it has been added and you know that on a's and tail what is added polyadenylation binding proteins polyadenylation binding proteins okay these are uh, these are be, uh, bound to A's. so this is the mature messenger rna first it was uh, first, uh, first it was pre messenger rna after that capping happens adenylation happens and let's suppose that splicing has been happened as well then this is the pre uh, sorry this is the mature messenger rna so this is mature messenger rna what is the significance of this poly a tail poly a tail protects against rapid degradation so you know that degradation of rna or dna happens with the help of which enzymes remember that that is the exonuclease enzyme which enzyme exonuclease enzyme exonuclease enzyme okay so you know that exonuclease enzymes cut the nucleotides from end from one side from corner one by one so let's suppose that let's suppose that Let's suppose, not basically, let's suppose this exonuclease enzyme comes and it cuts these A's one by one. So, first it will cut this one A's, then this one A's, then this one A's. You know that these A's are 200 or 300 uh, to 200 A's. And one interesting thing that these A's have no information for the formation of proteins. So, these have no information. These are non-coding region. So, don't bother about that, that an exonuclease enzyme is cutting these A's. So, don't bother about that. Let them cleave. Let them cut. Let them cut the A's. So, exonuclease enzyme will cut the A's, A's, A's. So, these have no information. So, in this way, this polyadenylation, we can say that this polyatail will save the information for the formation of proteins. 
but 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 basically what happens this is this was just suppose but basically what happens you know that there is a polyhydration binding protein that is binded on the is that is binded to the poly a tail then this poly uh, adrenalization binding proteins also contacts with the 5 prime cap with the 5 prime cap and it will turn the whole uh, this RNA in the form of a circular something like that this is the 5 prime this is the 3 prime and these are all A's okay and it is you know that which protein is a uh, binded poly adrenalization binding proteins so these will Act, these will interact with 5 prime as well and this messenger RNA will come in the form of circle and I have explained earlier that exonuclease enzyme just cut at the corner of the strand either it is a DNA strand or it is a RNA strand but you know, you know that uh, but you can look in this case that here is a no any kind of corner it is in the form of circle when there is a no corner when there is a no end then exonuclease enzymes will not be able to cut these nucleotides when these nucleotides will not be cut down then its security problems will be solved no information will be cut down whole information will be saved for the formation of proteins why we need this kind of security problem because you know that in case of eukaryotes messenger RNA has moved outside from nucleus to cytoplasm so from uh, from moving from its movement from cyto uh, uh, nucleus to cytoplasm many exonuclease enzymes can act on the messenger RNA and it can cut the information it can cut the nucleotides and can cut the informations for the formation of proteins so for uh, prevention of this degradation we uh, uh, for prevention of this degradation degradation this mechanism happens okay so uh, first I said that let's suppose that exonuclease enzyme is going to cleave cleave one by one but there is a hundred to two hundred A's so it's mean that it's cutting the non-informative part it's cutting the non-coding region so don't bother about that this is not a basically basically what happens that this poly A binding protein which is already bound to A's it will also act with the 5 prime and it will change the messenger RNA in the form of circle when it will come in the form of circle then exonuclease enzyme will not be able to cut any nucleotide because you know that exonuclease enzyme just act on the corners and here is a no corner here is a no end so therefore it will not be able to cut the uh, any nucleotide so it, in this way it will protect the it will protect the rapid degradation okay so next point is that it aids in transport of messenger RNA from nucleus to cytoplasm let's suppose that this is the cell this is the nucleus and this is the cytoplasm let's suppose that this is the nucleus and this is the cytoplasm as you know that in cytoplasm there are some kind of proteins that are the exportance proteins X proteins proteins in cytoplasm and this is this poly a tail let's suppose this is a messenger RNA 5 prime type and here is a A's at 3 prime then these A's are attracted by these X proteins these will interacted these are these A's are interacted the X uh, X proteins proteins so these are interacted the X proteins proteins so these will be attracted by exportant proteins or we can say that these will interact with the exportant proteins so in this way it will help the movement of the messenger RNA from nucleus to cytoplasm so in this way so now this will these will be interacted by the exportant and this will come outside and say into the cytoplasm so this is the uh, this also helps in the movement of the you can say that this, it also helps in the movement of the uh, pre messenger RNA uh, sorry not pre messenger RNA because now it has been changed into messenger mature messenger RNA so in the uh, it helps in the movement of the mature messenger RNA from nucleus to cytoplasm so it was about the polyadrenation in the first lecture we discussed about the supply uh, sorry capping and this, uh, the, 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 in the second lecture we discuss about the polyadrenation and in third lecture we will discuss about the splicing that how basically splicing happens and how this pre messenger RNA will, will become the complete mature messenger RNA so thank you so much guys see you in the next lecture